back here on the Cover 3 podcast, taking a look ahead at uh, not our last Saturday of notable spring games, but certainly the last one that is uh, loaded up the same way that last week and this week were. Uh, we still got Nebraska, Colorado, Oregon, a few others that are going to be trickling in uh, on that NFL draft weekend next weekend. We'll talk about those next week, but let's start in Ann Arbor in the Big Ten with the reigning national champion, Michigan Wolverines. Um, Dan Danny, if, if there's anything else that, that beyond quarterback that you know you've, you're you're looking at, but in general, what's you know where where are you going to start when it comes to the Wolverines in, in a game that much like their rival Ohio State, we will be able to see like there you don't need to break out no streaming for this. This is going to be very much in your face and easy to access on Saturday. So what do, what do you keep an eye on from uh, Michigan? Clearly, I'm kind of curious to see what they show on both sides of the football uh, with now this being Sharon Moore's offense, like all his. Do they try to throw it some to figure out who they got a quarterback? Or are we going to see a heavy, heavy dose of Donovan Edwards and they're going to be like, hey, this is what we're going to be? Um, I'm curious defensively. Again, I don't think they're going to show anything. By the way, did you guys see what Kirby Smart did in, their, in the Georgia game? I guess no. they had a tie. And instead of going for two, he went for the tie because he said, we didn't want to use our two point plays. Like we've done that before. And we didn't want to put that on tape, which like shows you it's all like, I think coaches are worried about what they show. So I, I don't know if you'll get a true look at, at Martindale's defensive concepts, but I mean, this team lost a lot. So there's a lot of new faces all over the field. You never know where Connor Stallions is going to show up. You just simply can't be putting this stuff on tape. <laughs> it also goes to show you how important these spring games are. Uh, I, I think that, like, yeah, it is it is. – I'm with Danny. I, I want to see both sides of the ball because with the Wink Martindale defense, like, I don't know if there's a whole lot of, like, confusion to Martindale's defense. He's probably blitzing. Like, that's that – you could probably – you know, it's just – he's probably bringing pressure. The only question is where is the pressure going to come from? That's where they try to disguise things. But that'll be interesting to see just the overhaul because defensively – we, I've talked about this. Martindale comes from that whole Ravens kind of tree where Michigan poached its last few defensive coordinators from like the Harbaugh back and forth pipeline between Baltimore and Ann Arbor. But it's not the same defense that like Mike McDonald and Jesse Minter ran. It's got some of the same ideas, but it's pretty, it's pretty different philosophically, honestly. And then offensively, yeah, it's the quarterback situation. I think is what everybody's going to have their eyes on because we really – do not know who that quarterback is going to be. Orgy's the front runner, but again, we've never seen him throw a pass, I don't think, at least not in a real game that mattered. So, yeah, it's there are like, I know I've been making fun of spring games and I don't think they're super important. And I always say the only thing I care about is getting through healthy, but there are things in this Michigan spring game that I'm actually interested in kind of seeing just because there's a lot of mystery to it because there's been so much change and this is a team that has won the national title a few months ago and it's completely different now three months later give me five to seven truly competitive pass attempts for the major quarterbacks in the running here like just give me something to be able to say like was it in rhythm did it look like they were going through their progressions? You know, what was the accuracy like? Like that, those would be things of interest to me when it comes to trying to compare these guys. I feel like, and have we been pushing the non-orgy options too much? Because it does seem that when I'm digging, some of the kickback has been like, yeah, it's pro it's probably going to be Alex Orgy. Yeah, it's probably going to be Alex Orgy. And so I'm curious to see. You no, know, okay, so of you know, Jaden Denegal of Jaden Davis of, um, you know, shoot, it's probably Jack Tuttle's banged up right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if there is any other uh, competition there that would surprise us. I mean, never forget we tuned into Texas's spring game last year, looking for Arch Manning and came out talking about Malik Murphy. So is mm -hmm. that, are we going to have another situation there where maybe the starter is established, but we've got a better idea of the rest of the room. Yeah, maybe, but what we don't know as far as the orgy conversation is maybe everybody thinks it's probably going to be Alex Orgy just because he's the only one they've seen play. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not like Michigan is broadcasting its practices and telling everybody what its plans are. Nobody really knows. That's why I'm interested in seeing what they do in the game. The guy that plays the most usually has the edge, right? He's going to yep. get the default, like, hey, if it's close, you're going with the experienced guy. I could see this playing out similar to Bama last year. When Jalen Milrow, we had seen glimpses of him. You know, we thought he was a really good runner, not a great passer. And then he even started off rocky. 
and then kind of figured it out. And I mean, they went and got a quarterback in the portal. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan does the same thing. And it was like, Ooh, what does this mean? Is this the new starter? And then, you know, Buckner got his opportunity, didn't do anything with it. And they were okay with Milrow. He kind of made advancements as the season went along. I'll be curious. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar, you yeah. know, where Rocky, I don't think he's going to light it up in the spring game. And everybody's gonna be like, you know, Alex Orgy for Heisman. I think it, the more likely scenario is that it's a little bit bumpy, you know, and there's not a clear cut and people are still talking about them getting a quarterback in the portal. Do you think that the vibe, I, so they are the reigning national champions and in a lot of different scenarios, when you're in that spot, the spring game is going to be a time where you're trying to fill up the stadium and, you know, maybe you're doing the title rings, but if not, you're at least showing a hype video and, and trying to get everybody pumped up. But, buddy, there's a, a lot of pieces of that national championship run that are gone, both on this, like Jim Harbaugh and all the coaching staff that are gone, the players that are going to go try to make a run at you know the record of NFL draft picks in a, in a single NFL draft. I don't know what they're, you know, I don't know if we're going to get a Harbaugh sighting. I don't know if we're, how many of those uh, players that are getting ready for the NFL draft are going to be around. But what do you think the – do you think the vibes are going to be like in the big house? You think it will be celebratory or do you think, okay. Yes. Okay. Although they won't be bragging about their attendance. Afterwards. I could see them being a little nervous. I could see it being a little angsty because you knew it was done. You know, this is, this isn't going to be a spring game after a national championship where you're coming in and be like, and it's going to go on forever. Like it very clearly is like, we have ended an era and your hope is that the reestablished standard from three straight big 10 titles at least has positioned Sharon more in the next era to win Big Ten titles more often than they were uh, prior to that run. I think the overall tenor of the Michigan fan base is very happy about everything that's happened. I mean, yeah, they they understand it's going to be different now that Arbaugh's left and he took a lot of coaches with him, but I I still think they're all very, very pleased with what happened the last few years. All right, Thomas, stay in the Big Ten. Uh, your, your beloved USC Trojans, the, mm -hmm. the rookies to the conference, um, what do you what are you going to be keeping an eye on there? I want to see what the defense looks like. I, I understand the quarterback situation, I think, but I think Miller Moss is probably your front runner there, based on how they did every preparation for the bowl game, and then they kind of passed up on the chance to really go after Will Howard. Um, but I want to see the defense. I want to see how it looks different philosophically. I want to see what they're trying and if they show anything. I'm guessing they won't, because again, that's part of the whole spring game thing. It's probably going to be pretty basic, pretty vanilla. But you could still pick up some ideas and tendencies and philosophies just by seeing if there's anything different in the way they line up, how they approach things, et cetera. So that's what I'm going to be watching. Danny, what about you? Who'd we say? I'm sorry. I was checking uh, something out. <laughs> My man USC. Jack from, from HQ is, is telling me what I'm talking about at noon. I'm sorry. What team? Hey, what are we talking about hey, at noon? Hey, listen. Do you, what are we talking about at noon? Coming NFL up on draft. Street. Here we go. At, at NFC or NFC team needs in the draft. Let's go. God, let's go. Um, let's see. Better coaching. The uh, entire league <laughs> needs, needs a miracle. Well, it is like the Bears Giants about need and like it. everything. Panthers <laughs> needs everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And the Panthers have no picks to be able to use on those teams. <laughs> Thanks around. for those, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. And, uh, Did you see the Sauce Gardner tweet yesterday? Uh-uh. So there was a, somebody tweeted like their top 10 of the you know mock draft and Sauce Gardner retweeted it. It says, wait. How the hell did the Bears get get two top ten picks with all the talent they already have? Who did they fleece? I'm sorry, I only play the games. I don't pay attention to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that is outstanding. Hey, hey, and how the sky do it too? How, yeah. how is Chicago Sky going to get Camila Cardoso and uh, Angel, Angel Reese? Reese? Angel Reese and yeah, twin Kobe White. Coming in. Kobe White dominating the play in tournament. Like this is the dawn of a dominant era in Chicago sports, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And by the way, the White Sox also jumped out to a two to nothing lead and blew it yesterday in a four two loss. <laughs> I haven't uh, watched a White Sox game in three weeks, Jim. All right, so Danny, uh, USC, as we talked about Lincoln Riley at the top of the show, is it? And this, oh my gosh, and I, I do not. There are hardworking people um, for the Pac twelve network that like this is like one of their last farewells. USC yeah. spring game mm -hmm. is you can find it on the Pac twelve network. So, well, they're still going to yeah. keep the network running, right? It's just with the two teams. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I saw they're going to go for a year. I thought I saw that. I could be wrong, but like they're going to still cover Oregon State and Washington State and maybe some Mountain West, I guess. I don't know. That's I don't know. I, I can't confirm that. But 
um <laughs> just a live stream of actual beavers like in a dam somewhere just <laughs> Oregon State's got a baseball yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah they have good they have good sports that's true um like you, I mean, like Tom said, I think Dan, Dan Lynn will be interesting. What does the new defense look like? What changes did they make there? Um, also, Miller Moss. I mean, that's a big question mark for me. I was under the impression that they wanted a quarterback. They were going to go get Will Howard. Like that was a lot of people had that pictured. And then all of a sudden, when Miller Moss threw six tutties in the bowl game, that maybe Will Howard was like, whoa, I don't know. I'm not going to go there if that looks like the quarterback that could be the future. But – if they were interested in somebody else, what does that mean? You know, like, is, was it Miller Moss's best day ever and they hadn't seen that? Or is he the future of the program? I don't know. So, also, is he Bear Alexander? Does he even play? You know, does he, does he just kind of go through the motions? You know, he's got his payday. He's coming back. Kind of the defensive pieces, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that House of Victory NIL collective, I feel like we've heard a lot from them. And so... Yeah, like uh, let's let's see if you all the roster retention is going to be able to hold for another you know twelve days or another week after we get this spring game in the books. Um, USC again, you can catch that one over on the Pac-12 network as they prepare for their first season as a Big Ten member. Uh, also, you got Michigan State, uh, Tom's fighting Illini, Iowa, and then Indiana. Indiana will be a weeknight game for the first uh, first spring game of the Kurt Signetti era. I think that's tonight. Um, what's uh, rest rest of the Big Ten? What what stands out? You know, in, anything uh, that that grabs your attention? I mean, who doesn't want to watch the Iowa spring game, right? To see to see what that offense looks like. New OC Tim Lester, Deacon the Thrill Hill, Fat Joe Milton over there. I just you know it's. Yeah, I I am legitimately interested because I want to see if they're running shotgun because that's the one thing that when I Tim Lester's offense is like ran out of shotgun one hundred ninety nine percent of the time in previous stops Iowa doesn't really run out of the shotgun so I want to see is Tim Lester coming in to run his offense or is Tim Lester coming in to run Kirk Ferentz's offense Ooh, that's a good one um obviously any new head coach at one of these power conferences going to grab my attention that would be Michigan State and Indiana in this case I don't know if I'm gonna be able to yeah I might be able to catch a little bit of Indiana I don't. I haven't checked the streaming options there. That might be a, a, a spring practice report from our friends at twenty four seven situation. But Aiden Childs, with, yeah. with yeah, Aiden Childs coming in Michigan State, Jonathan Smith. I don't know about you guys. I felt like Indiana was a team that fought hard for Tom Allen. It was just time to make a change. Michigan State felt like a program that desperately needed a change, mm-hmm. like desperately mm-hmm. needed some new life, some new energy. And I think they're getting that. I think Jonathan Smith is going to bring that. So just like. I think you'll be able to notice it. I think you'll see players playing harder. There was a lot of games look like they laid it, you know, laid it, just throw it in the towel. So I'm curious to see what they look like. I think they're going to be physical. They're going to run the football. Aiden Childs can run it a little bit as well as throw it. So I think I think you'll I think you'll see some optimism coming out for us, Sparty. I do think like it gets somewhat overlooked. Obviously, hiring Jonathan Smith is huge. Getting Aiden Childs is big. I also think you know we talked about Ohio State's motivation after watching what Michigan did last year. Michigan State has that same kind of motivation watching, you know, in-state Wolverines going. Because, like, Michigan State still had the, yeah, we've been to the playoff, too, and we never won a game there kind of thing that Michigan had. So it's like Michigan didn't really have anything on them in recent years. Now that Michigan's won the national title, they can lord that over Michigan State, too. Like, we, we pay attention to the big rivalry, but Michigan State does not like the Wolverines much either, so. Great call. I love that. Uh, Don in the tailgate, uh, Indiana tonight, Thursday on BTN. And yeah, we'll get to the Louisville Cardinals. That'll be Friday. Uh, That's an ACC network game. Um, All right, let's go ahead and take a pivot to the SEC where the Texas Longhorns. Y'all see Steve Sarkeesian said he considered the Alabama job for 60 seconds. For 60 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) He, uh, he, Long he, enough to call my agent and let yeah. him know, hey, call – is it Chris Del Conte that's the AD at Texas? So Yeah, the, uh, yeah call the, Chris. Let him know what Alabama's got on the table. <laughs> this, this is going to surprise you given the agents and everyone involved, but uh, but Chris Lowe has a big story uh, on Steve Sarkeesian <laughs> ahead of, ahead of uh, Texas's spring practice. And the way the story was told is that Steve Sarkeesian finds out about it 
I'm, I'm assuming from Jimmy Sexton. Yeah. And then he said, I thought about it for 60 seconds. And then Chris Del Conte called. <laughs> mm-hmm. And hey, we had him on, uh, we had him on the radio show, uh, the week. other morning. And, uh, he's very, he's in a good place. Yes. And he should be, you know, like, but they've lost a lot. I mean, there, and there's a reason why we were talking about them looking for a defensive tackle. He mentioned that was a position that they're, you know, they have to replace two guys that are probably going to go early in the NFL draft. And, um, you know, they lost a lot of production at receiver. Like we, like they've lost a lot. And yet he's like, you know, we've done a really good job around here recruiting and building up a roster where we can replace guys and raved about the quarterbacks and the relationship they have in the room. So, I mean, there's a reason why their win total is so high and they're, you know, a very popular pick to make it to the playoff and they're, they're in a good spot. I am a, I I am, I'm a sucker for vibes. Um, he seems to your point, Danny, so comfortable in his own skin as the leader of this program and like fully understanding the power while also understanding the work that's left to be done in that story. He was like, we're going to be talented every year. Talent is not the problem. It hasn't been the problem. We got to work on all this other stuff, like establishing the kind of rhythms and habits and making sure that we're playing our best football at the critical times of the game and in the critical games of a season. Like he seems to understand the from his own experience, you know, the fine margins. And then on top of that, you know, his own personal journey just makes him an interesting character to be able to say, like, yeah, like I've I have been through hell and I have come out on the other side and let, let me like tell you my story. Let me be honest with you. And, and let's try to build up a healthy culture because there, healthy culture is not anyone's analysis of where the Texas football program was there for a little bit in the last decade. And so the fact that he sees it on the ground level, I think that's what's powering his confidence in kind of what Texas can be under his, uh, un- under his guidance. Talent is not the problem. The story of Texas football in the 21st century. Yeah. yeah. You know what else he said, which I loved? We just asked him about the spring game expectations. Like, what are you looking for? And he, I don't, I don't think it was shots in anybody, but he's like, we're going to (laughs) tackle. Yes. I mean, I mean, he did. He's like, we're going to tackle. He goes, I think people forget sometimes it's a physical game. We're going to be a physical team. We're going to tackle. Like, so I, I, I appreciated that, that he said, uh, that he kind of said, we're going to be physical. Uh, Because I think that's one thing that Texas was lacking for a long time. They had all the talent. Maybe they were a little soft, maybe, you know, got run over, got bullied by some teams that didn't have as much talent, but, you know, out hit them. I think he's kind of, he's caught on to that and changed that mindset very much so. Quinn Ewers has a quote in that uh, Chris Lowe's story talking about, I mean, it, uh, talk about honesty. Uh, the, I'm paraphrasing here, but Quinn Ewers said something along the lines of, um, you know, Steve Sarkeesian got here and he looked at the roster. He decided who he wanted to keep and said goodbye to others. And like you just think about the exit that we've mm-hmm. seen and the way that he's been able to replace some of those. Danny, you mentioned all the, especially pass catching talent. That's the one that really stands out, especially when you've got a player like Quinn Ewers in an offense like that. So um, they get Silas Bolden from Oregon State. They get Matthew Golden, Bolden and Golden, LLP, attorneys at law. Uh, Golden from Houston. You get Isaiah Bond, also lawyer joke from Alabama. Like it's, you've got capable options there where I do think the expectation for Quinn Ewers should be, you're still running a a pretty lethal passing attack, especially with Tom's boy, CJ Baxter uh, as the feature back, getting things done. So I'm, I'm excited. I love that. We all want to see Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning though. Right. I mean, that's, that's kind of, we already know what Quinn Ewers can do. Of course. Do you want to hear the, the real, um, if, if, we start running that two quarterback system. I mean, this is just the gold. You know, we start calling him. It's like, oh yeah, Arch Manning's in a Tebow situation. <sighs> Art is Arch Manning in a Tim Tebow role going to lead Texas football to a national championship? Are they just going to have Arch like plowing into the line? What? what are they- <laughs> <laughs> like I'm Tim, Tim, Tim was a change of pace. Like I don't know if Arch Manning is a change of pace from Quinn Ewers. I, I I just if I I will try to fit that square peg in that round hole if they start rolling out some two quarterback systems. Oh my gosh! Now amazing. put them out there at the same time. Now we're doing something interesting. That's that. Is it a eleven football? I've referenced that on this podcast before. But do y'all remember that? It's like yeah. a 
I think it came from the Texas high school ranks where you would basically have two quarterbacks on the field at the same time. And you would even be doing the linemen all the way out to the splits where you've got like three here, then one here, one here. And with the snap comes and you could throw it to the other quarterback over here to create other advantages. We could do that. Come on, Sark. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Um, sticking in the SEC, uh, Texas A&M. Uh, first spring with Mike Elko, uh, Oklahoma. We mentioned them earlier. Jackson Arnold era begins South Carolina and Mississippi state on the slate for the Southeastern conference coming up this weekend. Danny, uh, any, any one of those, which one stands out to you? Texas A&M for sure. Um, you know, Mike Elko's debut, um, Colin Klein taking over the offense, Connor Wegman, who I, I've mentioned that on here before. Like every time we've seen him, he's been pretty good. He just couldn't stay healthy. You know, curious to see how he looks in this game. I'd expect them to be pretty physical. I think Mike Elko is going to have them well coached and ready to go. Also, speaking of crowd sizes, twelfth man's going to show up, right? Are they going to they going to try to post a tweet of the of the crowd? <laughs> Do they travel as well for spring games? It's definitely a thing, Tom. Whether you know whether you like it or not, it's a thing. Oh, it's a thing. It's a bunch of nerds. That's it's a nerd <laughs> thing. Like, come on, people. It's practice, but you know, cool. She so my daughter, my 11 year old, I'm trying to teach her all the mascots for uh, the 133 FBS team. So we were going over the bigger ones. And so we were doing the Aggies. And I said, they're the guys that go like this, like, back. and she goes, are they the ones that wear those weird overalls? And I was like, yep, you nailed it. <laughs> so now now she'll always remember the Aggies. <laughs> that I mean, yes, because yes. Isn't, yeah, they're. What an Aggie is a dog, right? Well, the collie oh. is the dog, right? Yeah. Now, where does an Aggie come Aggies, from? Aggies, because it's an agricultural Aggie. school. Oh, yeah. 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 You're just an Aggie. Yeah. So we're an Aggie. Yeah. We farm and stuff. Okay. Um, I d will I come out of this weekend as a Connor Wegman believer? Because that's the people are ready to sell you a bill of goods on Connor Wegman. And, you know, they can also include the change at offensive coordinator that you've got Colin Klein in there. Uh, we'll see. I'm uh, I'm very I'm, – I'm not going to buy in. I won't be first on the Connor Wegman train. But I understand that he's very talented, and uh, I'll certainly be keeping an eye on that. Uh, South Carolina, we've got, uh, you know, some interesting offensive options, you know, especially at the quarterback position. Jeff Lebby takes over at Mississippi State. And then for the Sooners, I think, I, th I think it should be pretty good, right? Oklahoma's kind of one of, of all the schools that are moving. Oklahoma's move to the SEC probably gets less conversation than the rest of them. I think the expectations are lower, right? Relative yes. to Texas. I mean, Texas or has got a 10 and a half win total. Like they're supposed to be competing. I think Oklahoma's schedule is brutal. And so everyone's like, yeah, there, we'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, starting a new quarterback. You know, Texas I think and Oregon are expected to compete for conference championships. Washington just had its head coach leave to go to Alabama at the worst possible time, and you're losing everybody off your roster. Oklahoma, yes, has said goodbye to Dylan Gabriel and you know some players from that group last year that I do think took a step forward from year one under Brent Venables. But this is a year three Brent Venables Sooners team that is you know kind of flying a little bit below the radar. So I'll be excited to you know, give them some of my attention this weekend and, and get a feel for what we're going to expect from the Sooners going into a season. We're like, let's see, I don't have, where's Bud? I need Bud to read a schedule for me. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> He's always got the schedules on deck. I'm trying to think like, what? Are, what's the good toss up game where like Oklahoma and Auburn, Oklahoma and Ole Miss. I don't know. Now, I mean, that's what we're going to be trying to put together over the next three months before we start to dive in. But how I position the Sooners against some of those other teams throughout a very tough schedule, that's uh, that, that'll be something that I'm excited to get new information for, for sure. Yeah, I, at I, Ole Miss, at Mizzou, at LSU. Like those three road games, the ones that you're kind of like, I think if you beat LSU, I think you're probably pleasantly surprised, but you're expecting, I think, to beat Mizzou. I think Oklahoma fans are probably expecting to beat Ole Miss, although I think Ole Miss will be favored. You know, like that's going to be an interesting game. I, I think this is a huge year for Oklahoma and Brent Venables. Like, yes, I, it's Texas like you mentioned, home. he's going into his third season. It's their first season in the SEC. 
they, you know, I wouldn't say pushed, but they they moved Dylan Gabriel along so they can get Jackson Arnold in there. I from Oklahoma people I talk to, they're very excited about that defense that they have or they think that they're going to have this year. They think it could be pretty good. Like to me, they took the step forward last season. Like they went what six and seven in his first year, and then last year they won ten games. I think that there's a chance like you could see a step back. You could see a step forward. I think it's mostly important that they maintain or they go forward. Like if they take a step back this year, I don't know. Like Chip, you said you're a big vibes guy. I don't think that would be good vibes going into year four for Brent Venables. And it could be very much like a Brent Venables is on the hot seat kind of situation. So none of that's going to be settled in the spring game clearly, but it's just a situation I think worth paying attention to, which gives me some interest in watching the Sooners this weekend. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, let's, uh, Danny, I know you got to run for CBS sports HQ, check them out at noon, talking about team needs on CBS sports HQ, the CBS sports <laughs> app and anywhere that you're connected. So we got to talk about Knowles, Florida state spring game coming up on Saturday. You going? No, I'm headed to Dallas. Oh, but what about the tournament. atmosphere? It's great. Don't you want to go? Spring <laughs> games are so much dad. fun. Yeah. I got to be a dad first. And uh-huh. I only go when they asked me to be the guest coach, which was the last time I was there a couple years ago, which was a ton of fun. I would go. There's a great uh, golf tournament that takes place tomorrow, the Varsity Club Golf Tournament, uh, but I am not going. I think all eyes are going to be on DJU, clearly, um, his development. I've been following it. And it yeah, apparently, he's looked really good in practice. Uh, even if he has a good spring game, it's all going to come down to me for he's clearly capable, right? He's had moments to me. It's about, can he take that next step and can it be consistent? And I don't know if we're going to learn anything about that, you know? So I'm more curious, like how do they place the defensive guys that they lost? You know, Braden mm-hmm. Fist, Jared verse, like there's, there's some talent on that roster. I'm excited to see what the young guys can do that need to step up. Do you remember like the commercials back in the day? Like, dude, you're getting a Dell. Yeah, of course. That's DJU. Like, you know, you're getting a Dell. You know what you're getting. It's not the most powerful whatever computer. You're not going to be able to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with it. But you know it's going to work, and it's going to get the job done, and it's going to be what you could put around him. So, yeah. No, I I, I got my uh, I got my notes from the propaganda machine. I've heard DJU's looked great. Same. Same. Yeah, like I, I have too. I, I, a lot of people are underrating and underselling what DJU's addition can be for Florida State. You know? Here's my take on that because I'm going to be very cautious in the DJU hype. He clearly has been an outstanding practice player because Dabo gave him the longest leash of maybe any quarterback we've seen. And Uh, he would say, oftentimes, we're going to see how we do. We're going to let it play out this week in practice. Like, he's got to do it consistently in games. And I do think Mike Norvell did a great job with quarterbacks along the way, even back at Memphis. I think he's a really underrated quarterback developer. I think he's going to put DJU in positions to succeed. He's going to build an offense that suits his skill set. Not like Clemson was kind of jamming him in there, but to me, he's like, he's got, he should look great in practice. He's played a lot of football to me. It's going to be about what does he do? You know, but I, I think it's, it's affirming that he's going to be at least adequate. Like, like that's why I do think like eight wins is the bottom. Like, cause I think he's going to be good. I don't know if he's going to be great, and that remains to be seen. So, like, I, I expect the he should look good in practice. Um, I I don't have the the roster in front of me, but also we'll have like uh, I don't know half of the second string Alabama team that won the SEC yes. last year. Mm-hmm. Malik Benson at wide receiver, Roy Dale Williams at running back. You know, a lot of pieces that you're going to be. Oh, he's at Florida State. Oh, he's at Florida State. Uh, another year of Mike Norvell cleaning up in in the portal, and of course Hakeem Williams, um, the sophomore now who's just all uh, as talented as all get out. You know, let's let's see if DJU with those weapons can field a really productive offense. Because Danny, to your point, defensively, I think that's where the concerns are. If you're a Florida State fan, so uh, it'll be exciting to see uh, how DJ Uyunglele looks for the Knowles.